Hey guys, Jesse McGibney here. I uh, thought I'd put together a little painting tutorial for you guys. Uh, I've had a couple people asking me what my process is and you know, what kind of Photoshop brushes I use and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick little walkthrough as to the way I work. Uh, might not be the best way, but I figure it works for me. So hopefully uh, you'll find it of interest. Uh, Alright, so first thing we got to do, of course, is open up Photoshop. Make a document. Um, first thing I'll have to, I like to do is, is open up a second window for it, which you can go to Window Arrange, Open New Window. Uh, and that'll kind of give you uh, two windows. It works a little bit like a navigator window, but it's a bit bigger and you can resize and stuff like that. Um, what I always do is drag it off to my second monitor, which you can't see here. Uh, but it lets you, lets you save some space um, and still see what you're doing at a, a smaller size. Um, what I did there was just hit the F key, and that'll kind of bring up the whole window. Man, I work really fast. All right, <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sketch down a little doodle here. Um, obviously, this, this video is gonna be pretty quick, so it's nothing nothing spectacular. So I'm just gonna do a little lizard dinosaur guy here. Uh, this brush is just a, a straightforward round hard edge brush. Nothing. Spectacular, easy for sketching, and that's about it. So, let's draw my little dinosaur, or whatever he is. Some shadows, there's gonna be a lot of dead air. <laughs> um, just kind of resizing him. So, now that I've got my little dinosaur, I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a background fill. Um, I like to make a, a, a dark kind of blue. This gives me something to build up from. So I'll, I'll just fill the background with a dark blue. And I like to paint from dark to light. I find it it helps a lot as opposed to straight painting from, from white to dark. That can get kind of a pain in the ass. So this is my, my painting brush. It's a rounded square brush. Uh, I'm just going to go to the brush tablet here. Um, how it works is it, it rotates with direction. So if you go to the angle jitter and the control is set direction on, that means whatever direction the, the brush is traveling in, it'll, it'll kind of rotate. So that keeps the square edge um, in alignment with the direction the, the brush is moving. And it gives it a nice kind of uh, paintbrush look. I, I find it, I like it a lot better than a round brush. Um, diameter is not such a huge change. Um, I like to do that with just the, the hotkeys, which are the uh, square brackets. I have that as a button on my tablet. So you can see it, how it rotates there. It gives it a nice kind of you know, flat termination point that I feel looks a little paintbrushy. Um, my opacity is set to 100% and flow is to 15 which I find a nice middle ground. Um, it's good for blending and, and for blocking in colors. Uh, if I need to do softer things, I'll, I'll change that around. Um, I never really use a soft brush, because you can make uh, soft edges with a hard brush, but you can't really make hard edges with a soft brush. So uh, what I'm just doing here is laying in kind of a quick color palette that I can pick colors from really easily. So I'll kind of pick a base, base color, blend it into the background, Pick a highlight color, blend that in as well. And then the eye picker tool, or the uh, eyedropper, is your best friend. Um, it's hotkeys alt. But I have it set to one of the buttons on my uh, stylus. And the other button I have set to spacebar, which is pan. So you can kind of drag around the, the canvas really easily. Um, but you can see any, anytime my crosshair changes, that's me using the eyedropper. So I'll just kind of blend it in and then pick whatever color I need that's nearby. And go away, Giorgio. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll just kind of pick whatever color is nearby and that makes color picking much, much easier. It's very quick. Um, so I'm just kind of blocking in uh, a generic light source. Light source here. It's pretty straightforward. My knowledge of, of light study isn't terribly complex or great, but it does the job. 
So uh, normally I work on a, on a Cintiq, but to record this I had to switch it to kind of tablet mode. So this was a little weird feeling going back. Um, normally I have a whole monitor to draw on basically. Um, which it's much nicer because there's, there's not a very big disconnect between your hand and your eye. Because when you're drawing on a tablet, it, you know, there's, you're, you're looking one place and drawing in another place, and it can be a kind of weird feeling. And even going back to that from drawing on a Cintiq, it's, it's a little odd. Uh, it makes my drawing kind of angled. You see everything's kind of slanting down to one side. But that's the price I pay, I guess. Drawing circles is a little harder. If you can afford a Cintiq, they're really, really nice. I highly recommend them. So, it's going along. More color picking, more laying stuff in. Again, this is pretty quick. I probably get it on it quicker, but whatever. I just can keep rambling on. Uh, if you can look at the layers there, what I, what I have for the layers is I have the background is, of course, the blue color. Layer one is my sketch, um, just the line art. And then layer two is uh, all my paints. I paint directly on top of the line art and then let the line art show through. Um, I don't usually put a whole lot of investment in terms of actually, you know, inking the thing ahead of time or, or doing stuff like that. I like to just kind of paint over it and go from there. A lot of de details I'll add in, you know, after I'm painting. Um, so, of course, now I'm just adding in highlights and more, more lighting. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. There's a little bit of rim lighting on his on his belly and stuff like that. Um, you'll, you'll see me doing this a couple times in, in painting. Is I'll I'll take the image and I'll flip it, and that is very very important for when you're working on a piece for a long time. Um, when you rotate it or flip it or flip it upside down or something like that, it gives you a whole new kind of outlook on the image, and things will show up that you <laughs> didn't even know were there big errors, so big glooming things that just do not look right. And when you, as soon as you flip it, they instantly pop out. Again, this one is really simple, so it's, you, can see, you, can, you can tell the whole thing is kind of leaning. I'm not going to fix it because I'm trying to save some time. But, uh, you know, like sometimes a hand will be really messed up and you won't even see it until you flip it. Um, so I usually try and do that, you know, every, you know, 15, 30 minutes or so uh, when I'm painting and then I'll flip it back. And, because a lot of time composition relies on reading it from left to left to right, um, but being able to flip it just kind of gives you that uh, uh, new perspective on it. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I, I made a new layer. Uh, this is my masking layer, and what I like to do, especially for character drawings, is I'll, I'll paint the character um, pretty much to completion, and then I'll cut it out from the background. Um, with just a, a masking layer, so I'll, I'll just go around and 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 pull the whole thing out of the background, and this lets me really easily select everything but the character if I need to put them in an environment or or just give them a nice colored background. I don't have to to muck around with the edges and stuff like that because I've already done that. Um, and it also I, I like kind of the uh, the line art quality. It you know cutting it out from the background gives it a nice kind of heavy line. Um, if you're doing anything kind of more painty, like more and more traditional, uh, you don't want lines, you want edges. And the only difference between the two is, is just bringing, bringing the contrast of two different colors together. Um, so if I just refine it, refine it, eventually it'll lose the lines and just become edges. Um, so yeah, that's just what I'm doing is, is cutting it out. And then I can easily uh, select it. This is a, a harder uh, flowing brush. You can see I've switched it to 35% flow, which it, it won't blend, but I don't have to push as hard to get a nice solid block of color. Uh, I'm just going to crop it because there's so much extra junk in the way. So you can see there, I just select it, and it's completely out of the background. It's really nice. It's really fast and easy. And I can do whatever I want with the background with no further mucking up the character. And then I'll you know, go in the background and paint things like shadows and, and blended colors. So now I want a nice kind of soft shadow. So I set my flow to 5%. And it makes blending stuff a lot easier. You still get uh, a nice kind of uniform look to it. 
I find if you switch from hard brush to soft brush, it's, it's hard to get uh, consistency in the style. Because soft looks really airbrushy, and if you're using you know, nice blocky colors, it's, it's hard to make look like it's the same <laughs> image. So, but if you have a nice low flow, it still has the, the hard edges, but it's much softer, if that makes any sense. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just screwing up, actually color balance. Um, you can pick layer uh, styles, like layer filter options. And what I'm doing here is just, if, if I want to recolor something quickly, but don't want to have to repaint the whole thing, I'll do a, just a quick hue adjustment layer. And this has a mask on it, where if you fill the whole thing with black, which is non-masked, you can go back into the mask layer and, and basically paint in whatever filter you put on. Um, without drastically changing the, the values of the, the painting. Um, so I'm just putting little spots. And it's, it's nice for, you know, quick fading in of colors or, or effects like that. So I'm just going to, you know, give them a nice little kind of strawberry head. I think it looks kind of cool. It's a really quick, easy way to recolor something without repainting the whole bloody thing. So... Now that's done, I'm gonna I'm gonna toss on a texture, um, just because I think they look nice. It adds a nice bit of detail that wouldn't otherwise be there. Uh, just in the paper, it helps it looking. It helps to keep looking at, you know, really digital. If you get a nice real world texture, um, I get most of my textures from a website called cgtextures.com, and they have a really nice huge selection of of textures that you can download for free. Uh, so it's just a, a plaster wall that I've set to overlay. I'm kind of muck around with the brightness and contrast to to make it not so uh, different. You kind of flip the layer on and off to figure out how it is. And you know, that's that's all it really takes is just slapping on top and dragging it around. You can, of course, with the masking layer that I did, you can pull it in and out from the character so it's only in the background or only on the character or whatever you want. Uh, this is just a, a quick post-processing color adjustment. Um, just kind of fiddling around with, with stuff like that. I figure it, it really helps make the picture pop when you're finished with it. Um, you know, brings on some colors that, you know, you either didn't know were there or, or stuff like that. And then the final step I do on pretty much every painting I do is sharpen it because Photoshop tends to make things kind of blurry. So if right at the very end you merge all your layers together and then throw in a quick sharpen, it uh, looks quite nice. So that's it for that picture um, in this tutorial. I hope that helped some of you guys out. Uh, maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, maybe my style sucks, maybe it's great, I don't know. But uh, I was glad to do this, so I'll uh, talk to you guys next time. Have a good one.